He ate the steak and then looked for a break. The search is on for a dine and dash suspect in Monroe. Surveillance cameras at Angelo's Chop House captured the one-of-a-kind getaway. Fox 2's Jessica Dupnack picks up the story. Take a look at this. Someone has got to recognize this run or walk or whatever it is. I mean, come on. This guy is accused of a dine and dash, possibly even a serial offender, hitting one, maybe two restaurants here in Monroe. He had a couple shots of Patron, a Corona, and a New York strip. <laughs> Sounds like a good night. <laughs> yeah, he was enjoying himself. Racking up a tab of $70 here at Angelo's Chop House off I-75 in Monroe last Saturday night. And he was nice, he was polite, he was dressed with the collar, khaki, pants. Wearing polo Ralph Lauren even, and a run-walk thing to match that preppy little look. He came in, he said he was waiting for someone to meet him. And that person never showed up. Server says he seemed normal until he got a little fidgety towards the end with a couple bites left of that medium rare. He went to the bathroom and then casually strolled out the door. And then I got on the cameras and looked and I saw as soon as he hit the door, he started running, <laughs> if you want to call it running. He kept that pace up to the back of Angelo's where it's surrounded by a couple of hotel motels. Possible he slipped in his room and out of sight. I did see someone posted online that Red Lobster next door said that they had a dine and dash the night before. Manager Nick Sippis went to neighboring Red Lobster and indeed it happened the night before they got hit. But really, I don't want to do it to anyone else again. You know, if he's if he's continuing doing this, you know, it needs to stop. It's back to business as usual. Thankfully, Nick says in four years, this is only the third time they've dealt with a dine and dash. What do you say to this guy if he's watching later? Uh, come back and pay your tab. You heard Nick. They just want to recoup the tab. If you recognize this guy, call Angelo's Chop House. Reporting in Monroe, Jessica Dupnack on the edge. All right, there's an expression in Michigan. Wait five minutes and the weather will change. Well, it sounds like we're going to get a little bit of everything in the next couple of days, including yeah. the threat of storms. Meteorologist Stephanie Mead has her forecast. You're not talking about but winter yeah. storms, you're talking nope. about spring-like storms. Yeah, for sure. And this is a little unordinary uh, for the month of February. We are talking temperatures in the 60s, potential for some stronger to severe thunderstorms. We have two rounds of that, actually, over the next 24 hours to 36 hours, and then potentially maybe a few flurries. So a lot going on for us here across the state. Numbers right now actually continue to warm. So I think we're going up from here. We're in the mid-50s out near western and central parts of the state. Ludington, you're at 55 low 60s in Chicago. We're in the low 40s right now in Detroit at 43 degrees. As we head through the overnight hours, those numbers will slowly inch northward and we will see 50s waking up early tomorrow morning and those will continue to climb into the mid 60s. Sky tracker is quiet for right now, but we do eventually start to see a few storms move through. This is all riding along a warm front that will continue to lift as we head through the overnight into the day tomorrow and into the evening hours as well. So right now, now we have a marginal risk, so a low end severe weather risk, a one out of five for the morning hours tomorrow. So for the morning drive and then a slight risk for those across pretty much the southern half of the state. That's for tomorrow evening and into early Wednesday morning. The main threats with the second batch of showers and thunderstorms is going to be the potential for some damaging wind and hail. Now we do have that same threat through the morning. The only difference from our morning round to our evening round is going to be the potential for maybe an isolated tornado, and I think that occurs during the evening and overnight hours. So here's our first batch that arrives by around 7, 8 o'clock. That will quickly exit, and we see a lull in activity through a good part of our daytime hours. It's really not until tomorrow evening, a bit closer to midnight and beyond, where we see that opportunity for kind of an explosive opportunity for seeing that severe thunderstorm risk develop during the very early morning hours come Wednesday. This is by 2 in the morning. That will quickly exit. Right behind that, we'll see much colder air spill in. So anything left over potentially falling as some light flurries. We see winds tomorrow directly out of the south, a bit breezy and then gusty through the day on Wednesday out of the north northwest that will fill in and bring us much colder air. Mid 60s tomorrow afternoon and then we see those numbers cool off into the upper 30s by Wednesday. The extended forecast shows numbers still in the 30s by Thursday and then by the end of the week we're in the upper 40s to 50s to low 60s by this weekend. Don't forget you can always get the latest forecast by checking the Fox 2 weather app. Download it for free in the App Store or Google Play. Group.
All right, no excuse not to vote. You got to break between those uh, weather systems to go out and do your thing. All right, in Sterling Heights, an attempted theft of a semi truck ending in an environmental hazard. The tractor trailer was stolen last night from the parking lot of an industrial building on 15 Mile near Van Dyke, but it didn't get far. The suspected thief crashed into a concrete barrier, causing diesel fuel to spill out of the truck. Firefighters used absorbent mats and other materials to stop the gas from going into the storm drain. We're told about 50 to 80 gallons of diesel diesel may have made it into the storm system. A contractor has been hired by the city to clean up the site. As a precaution, an absorbent boom was placed downstream to make sure the diesel fuel doesn't reach the wastewater in Warren. Well, tonight, a little girl was found wandering in an Allen Park neighborhood. And we are happy to report she's now safe with her family, but authorities have some questions. Allen Park PD made their post on their Facebook page around 530 this evening, hoping that someone would recognize this young child who was dressed in only a nightgown. Within two hours, the parents were located. It appears the girl managed to sneak out, but going unnoticed. She was found down the street from the house. Child Protective Services is now involved in this case. A similar scene playing out in Macomb, Macomb Township this weekend, but this case involved three kids all under four years old. The children were found Saturday morning on Blossom Lane near 21 Mile and Romeo Plank. They were not dressed for the cold weather. When deputies tracked down the kid's father, he admitted to leaving them home alone. The 36-year-old was taken into custody. The children were turned over to their mom. We're still looking for an African-American male. He's last seen wearing a camo jacket with a gray hoodie underneath. Fox 2 obtained this new surveillance video of the man wanted for abducting a three-year-old girl during a weekend car theft in Detroit. The child was in the back seat of the vehicle at a gas station at Schoolcraft in Greenfield Saturday night when that vehicle was stolen. The toddler was found hours later near Joy and Braille and then safely reunited with family. You can make anonymous tips about that suspect's identity to Crime Stoppers by calling 1-800-SPEAK-UP. Ukrainian Americans gathering to call for more aid. They want Congress to keep funding the war effort against Russia. Demonstrators rallied in Warren this afternoon outside the offices of Congressman John James. They're demanding Republicans take action to support an economic aid package to Ukraine. They say two years into the war, the delay in funding is costing Ukrainian lives. My native country, Ukraine, protect democracy and people dying. People dying for the freedom, to live free in the, in the land. Congressman James has previously stated he supports standing by Ukraine, but not sending them a blank check. A local group is asking Metro Detroit voters to vote uncommitted in tomorrow's presidential primary election. Many say they're unhappy with the Biden administration. Uncommitted votes, Taryn, could swing the November election to former President Donald Trump. Fox 2's Dave Spencer spoke with the campaign manager about their message for people watching. Cold calls being made from a campaign office in Dearborn. If you uh, want to learn more about the uncommitted campaign, you can go to listen to, listen to Michigan.com. But these volunteers are not asking for the support of any single candidate, quite the opposite. And so we're asking Michigan voters to vote uncommitted in, uh, under the Democratic ballot. Uncommitted, a term that the grassroots group of activists called Listen to Michigan first heard back in 2008 when former President Barack Obama was running against Hillary Clinton in the Michigan primary. To vote uncommitted as a way to embarrass um, Hillary Clinton's campaign and it really worked and so we're taking that same method, that same strategy and applying it to hopefully save as many Palestinian lives as possible. The group started their campaign in early February, another effort to get the attention of the current administration. We hit the streets, we demonstrated, we marched, we rallied, we called called our representatives, we wrote our representatives, we did everything we could um, to demand a uh, permanent ceasefire now, and now we're taking that protest to the ballot box. Governor Gretchen Whitmer was on CNN this weekend urging voters to cast a vote in favor of President Joe Biden. Any vote that's not cast for Joe Biden supports a second Trump term. Listen to Michigan says voters need to vote their conscience. 
They are literally not listening to their voters that put them in office in the first place. And Democrats are demanding a permanent ceasefire. And if that falls on deaf ears, then it is only going to be the president and his administration that will have to answer to that. This group plans to spend primary election day distributing flyers and materials outlining their position to as many voters as possible. I was hoping, William, that I can count on you to vote uncommitted. To the future is a little uncertain for Listen to Michigan. They say their focus right now is on the primary, and once that's over, they'll have a strategy session to determine how their position is doing and any next steps that they may take. Dave Spencer on the edge. Fear today at Oxford High School as a bomb threat prompts a lockdown and an early dismissal. The, this threat was delivered through an email. The message claimed that somebody had a bomb in their vehicle outside the high school and it was going to go off. Law enforcement agencies conducted a full sweep of the area. Now, nothing was found. Students were told to go home around 11 a.m. The threat was deemed not credible and authorities tell us it appears to have come from Malaysia. Oakland County Sheriff Michael Bouchard telling us regardless of where in the world the threat comes from, they're going to attempt to hold the person criminally responsible. A fourth person is now charged in the shooting of an 11-year-old girl in Detroit. 19-year-old Herschel Marion faces nine counts of assault with intent to murder, but those charges are expected to be upgraded. We learned that Lamara Glenn passed away this morning, days after being removed from life support. She was shot in the head during a drive-by as she slept on a couch inside a home on Pennsylvania Street last week. There are three other suspects, all under the age of 21, who are also charged. 23 shots were fired into the house. It's still unknown why the home was targeted.